Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So now we want to do this problem. We want to ask, what is 60 divided by 8? And remember, the first thing I want you to think in your brain is, well, I want you to think it first. No, I'm just kidding. I want you to think in your brain, what is the biggest multiple of 8 that does not exceed 60? What is the biggest multiple of 8 that equals or does not exceed 60. Let me write that down. So I have written here the thought process that I verbalized a few moments ago. And the reason why I want to write this down is because I want you guys to read it a couple of times before you proceed with the rest of the problem. And in any case, when you're facing future division problems, I want you to have this thought at the top of your mind when you're doing problems. It's kind of like um, as you might see in some of my other videos, I'll always emphasize some verbal phrase or statement whenever I'm doing a problem. Maybe I'll say it twice or something. And basically, the way I'm thinking about this is the way you think about something, the thoughts that you're having with respect to that thing, the way you can, or let me restate that, I'm sorry. The way that you say verbally something reflects the way you think about it. And so what I want to give you guys is one kind of way of thinking about these problems that will get you to a better place of understanding. And then as you develop expertise, you can think about these things in new ways and you can branch off on your own. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now and we're going to proceed. Yes? Yes. Very exciting. Okay. So let, let's so let's get straight to the point, right? We want to do 60 divided by 8 and we want to find out what is the biggest multiple of 8 which either equals 60 or which at least does not exceed, is not bigger than 60. So let's do it together. 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 3 is 295,000. Wait, reboot. No, I'm just kidding. 8 times, rebooting. No, I'm just kidding. 8 times 3 is 24. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 5 is 40. By the way, I'm cheating here. I have them written here on my hand. No, I'm just kidding. 8 times 5 is 40, 8 times 6 is 48, right? We're thinking about this number, right? 8 times 7 is 56. Ah, uh, we're getting close, right? And 8 times 8 is 64. Ah, uh, look at that, right? 8 times 7 was 56, right? And 8 times 8 is 64. And we can see that 56 is the biggest multiple of 8, that either equals or does not exceed 60. In this case, it does not exceed 60. So we know that we're going to stop here, okay? If we go to 8 times 8, it's already too big. You see that? Because 64 is bigger than 60. So we're going to write down the 7. And again, you might say to me, well, David, 60 is bigger than 56, right? So what does that mean? That means that we're going to have a remainder. So let's write an R here to represent that we're going to have a remainder. Okay? And now we need to find out what the remainder is. How do we find out what the remainder is? Or what does it mean? The remainder is the amount by which our given number that we're trying to divide exceeds that biggest multiple. Okay? How much does 60, by how much does 60 exceed 56? How do we determine that? We divide, we subtract. 60 minus 56 okay so let's perform this subtraction actually let me actually let me bring this subtraction up here because you know we need to remember these basic techniques what is 60 minus 56 and i want you to watch with me very carefully i want to ask myself can i take away six from zero can i take away six from zero no right because there's nothing here to take the six away from so what do we have to do in a case like this? We have to borrow. From this 6, I'm going to take away 1. That's going to leave a 5 there, and that's going to make this into a 10. Remember, you can think of it, if you if you think back to your place value system, you know that this 6 represents 6 tens. I take away one of the tens to make this 1s, which in this case there are 0 1s, plus the 10 to make it complete 10, and I'm left with 5 tens here. So now I ask, what happens when I take 6? away from 10. So that's 4, right? 
and then 5 minus 5 is 0, so that'll be our remainder. 7, remainder 4. Okay. So as far as we're concerned, um, we've solved the problem. 60 divided by 8 is equal to 7, remainder uh Oh my god. Seven remainder four. Okay. Let me place that here. Okay. Now we're gonna again look at the standard uh, notation that we're gonna be using in the future in future division problems. And then we're gonna discuss how we might interpret this result. Okay, let's do that together real quick. So for example, I want to do 60 divided by 8. So the way I would write it in our other notation is we would put the 8 on the outside of the division house. The division house is this like kind of sideways L thingy, right? And then you place the number, you want to divide by 8 on the inside. So you would read this as 60 divided by 8, okay? And in your brain, you can think of it as the way you want to think about this is how many times does 8 go into, in this case, 60? Right. If it was another division problem, like let's say this one, let's say, we would say how many times does 7 go into 56, right? But now, to actually do the division, we don't think that way. We go smaller, okay? Let me show you. So usually, we're going to go digit by digit. How many times does 8 go into 6? It doesn't, right? 6 is too small. So then we ask, how many times does 8 go into 60? Aha! How many times does 8 go into 60 captures the idea we thought of before? What is the biggest multiple of 8 that is equal to or less than 60? And we already know that that's 7. We know that that's 7 because 7 times 8 is 56. Now, first we just did that and that's why we know this number. But whenever you're doing it on paper, don't hesitate to count in your, on your hands the way we did together, or to count in your head, you know, 8 times 1 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 8 times 3 is 24, 8 times 4 is 32, and so on and so forth. Okay? And so now, 7 times 8 was 56, and now we're going to perform the subtraction. 0 minus 6, we can't do that, right? Because 6 is bigger than 0. We have to borrow. So I take away one of the tens from the tens place. This leaves 5 tens, and that one ten plus the zero ones becomes a 10. 10 minus 6, that's the 4. 5 minus 5 is 0. So now I ask, how many times does 8 go into 4? 0 times. 4 is smaller than 8, right? There's no other numbers here. That point is going to be more important later. Okay? But basically, this gives us the same result as we got here. See, this 7 corresponds to the number of whole copies of 8 that go into 60. And 4 is the remainder. Okay, how many are left over after we've uh, completed the 7 groups of 8, if you want to think about it that way. So the nice thing about this notation is that it lets us do both, um, it lets us do both of the steps at the same time. What's the biggest multiple that equals or does not exceed the given number we're dividing? And what is the remainder? We can do both of those calculations in the same place. And you'll see later when we're doing bigger division problems that this has other advantages as well. So now we want to figure out an interpretation for this, okay? What does this mean? Why do we care about it, right? So now we're going to interpret what this result means uh, in a practical sense. What does 60 divided by 8 equal 7 remainder of 4 mean? Right? Why do we care about it? What kind of problems can we solve with it? So one interpretation. So one interpretation of this problem is that we might want to find out how many groups of size 8 can be made from 60 items. The 60 items could be the 60 people I'm going to invite to my weekend party. Okay? That no one knows about. Um and that no one can talk about, okay? You see what I'm saying? Um, they could be the 60 um, congratulatory gifts I'm gonna give to my top 60 performers in my, uh, in, my, uh, in my gigantic organization. You know, they could be the 60 um, 
And you might say, well, David, why would you cut them into groups of eight? Because I'm generous. I want them to have one gift for every day out of uh, a week. Well, a week and an extra day because, you know, weeks only have seven days, okay? But anyway, you get the idea. I want to take 60 items, whatever those items are, I want to organize them into groups of eight for some reason, okay? This result, that 60 divided by 8 gives us 7 remainder 4, can be then interpreted as 7 complete groups, okay? And 4 items left over. Okay? The seven complete groups comes from the quotient. That's what this number is called. And the four items left over, the four items that could not go into a group of eight, that comes from our remainder. Okay. And then here, just for fun, I have made a visual illustration of the situation. Let's pretend that each of these round circles represents a table. Now, unfortunately, because I didn't plan this drawing ahead of time, some of these tables are obviously of different sizes, or anyone who knows me might know that I cheaped out and got the cheapest tables, and so I couldn't even get them the same size. No, I'm just kidding. But let's pretend they're all the same size, and they're beautiful tables, and each stick represents a person. Each table, each complete table, has eight people sitting at them. You can see that here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? So I have eight, sixty, twenty-four. 32, 40, 48, 50. So here I made a visual interpretation just as an extra, okay? Each of these circles is going to represent um, a table, and each stick on these circles represents a person sitting at these tables. Um, now, of course, um, because I didn't plan ahead of time, these circles are not all equally spaced or organized in any way, and they're not the same size, so someone who knows me might think I cheaped out on getting the tables, because otherwise I would have gotten them all the same size, but we don't care about that. From the math perspective, we don't care about that, okay? So anyway, these are our tables. Each stick represents a person, and if you count the tables, you'll see that I have eight persons each. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we can count how many people there are seated. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 56. So 60 divided by 8, right? Notice how each of these circles, each of these tables has 8 people. So we have 7 complete tables, and that ended up being 56 people. And we have 57, 58, 59, 60. We have 4 extra people to complete our 60. And so there you can see... The seven complete groups of eight, which are the seven people seated at these, um, uh, which are the eight people that are seen in each of these seven complete tables, or in other words, the seven complete tables with eight people sitting at each table, and the four people who are left over. So, for example, I would have needed to get another table to make sure that I sat them down properly. Okay, uh, but anyway, so this visual illustration shows you the meaning of. It gives a visual picture to this interpretation. We have seven complete groups of eight and four left over. Okay? Okay. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this example and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you've enjoyed this video that you just finished watching. If you have, if you have found it to be a value, um, you know, or if you liked it, whatever the case may be, you can like the video. You can subscribe to my channel. So you can find all the other videos that I'm going to make in the future and that I already have uh, so that you can watch them for, for value, for enjoyment, whatever the case may be. If you want to watch uh, a collection of my math videos that is in order, organized, uh, according to Cedric, and organized in terms of learning, uh, in terms of a logical ordering, arrang logical learning arrangement, rather, I recommend davidsmastering.com where you can get access to them. And of course, if you just want to buy me a coffee because you thought that my video helped you out that much that it's worth a coffee or two, please, you can visit these sites where you can buy me a coffee, okay? And uh, on these two sites, you can also find some services that I might be able to offer you. Um, and uh, 
Yeah, he came. So, hope you can live it through and, and thank you for